Mm -hmm. So um, this is the introduction to vectors. That is also one of the topics in physics. So under vectors, if we are trying to relate to grade 12 or secondary level, we are going to understand that under vectors, that's where you are going to find the definition of what a vector is as well as a scalar quantity. So we know that in simple definitions, if you define what a vector is, a vector is just a quantity which is having both magnitude and direction. The meaning of magnitude will simply mean uh, the, it can either be the displacement it takes, uh, it can either be the velocity it, uh, it takes, and so many other quantities that falls under vector quantities. But when it comes to scalar quantities, automatically scalar quantities simply mean all the quantities that only have the uh, magnitude without a direction. So, those are the definitions of two different quantities we are going to be talking about in here. So, if someone is to say, what are the examples of uh, vector quantities? So, here I'll write the examples of um, vector quantities. The quantities and on this other side I'll write the examples of scalar scalar quantities okay so if I'm to specifically give out the examples of vector quantities and scalar quantities I have to point out all the examples that have magnitude or all the quantities that have magnitude as well as the, um, the direction I can start here by saying the force. I know that if I'm pushing something on a horizontal surface, a force can point in a specific direction to make a given object move. So hence, the force in this case is an example of a vector quantity. Apart from force, we also have displacement. Displacement. Displacement is also one of the examples of um, vector quantities. Apart from that, I can also have the so-called velocity. Velocity is also one of the examples of um, scalar quantity. So basically, we have so many examples under vector quantities. So when I, when I come to this other side, here I'm saying a force is an example of a scalar quantity. Displacement, meaning that the other thing apart from displacement is going to be the the same meaning or the same quantity which is as just one and same like displacement so examples of um, scalar quantities here i can put uh, distance because distance it only has uh, the so-called magnitude without it, the direction so distance sorry i'm talking about distance here distance so here we are talking about velocity here i can put what is speed so another example we can put is work work also falls under uh, the so-called scalar quantities but it is made up of two different vector quantities so like we said uh since we are saying vector quantities they have uh, magnitude as well as the direction okay Okay, so meaning that since we're saying vector quantities have magnitude and direction, meaning that every vector must have what uh, its components. So let's say we have different vectors that are pointing in so many, many, many ways or in so many directions. So specifically, these are the examples of vector quantities. So let's say you're talking about a force. If an example has been given in this case, whereby they're saying uh, four different forces, this can be my example. This can be my example. Four different, four different forces acting on. Acting for different forces acting on the bow 
uh, 15 newtons uh, 15 newtons 30 degrees and then we have 10 newtons 20 degrees we can also have 5 newtons and 45 degrees and the, uh, 20 newtons 16 degrees so the rule of vectors actually the best rule that applies to vectors is that all the angles has to be read from the positive x axis and the angle that is going to be crossed by the oh sorry the component since we are saying all oh, these vectors must have their components since they are raised at a given angle definitely all the um, all the angles that are in short all the components that are cut by the angle they must have what they must have carried a cos a cosine remember we are normally using two different identities in this case which is cos as well as the sine cos and the sine okay so we are saying these vectors they all act at a given ball so I'll do like this using the x or y plane remember like i said the component that is going to be cut by the angle must carry cosine so basically before even i move to the next point vectors can be solved using so many methods we have component method we have analytical method we have also graphical method so in this case we normally prefer using the so-called uh, graphical methods by drawing a, a table that is showing all the components so specifically here we have four different vectors having four different vectors i can draw all these vectors on an x or y plane and show all the angles depending on every vector okay so we can have the first vector here which is what 15 newtons or rather i can put uh, my 5 newtons which is raised at a given angle of what 45 degrees we also have the other vector which is uh, 10 newtons being raised at a given angle of what so this is 5 newton also have this one which is raised at a given angle of uh, 20 degrees definitely we have the other one which is raised at a given angle of um, so this one this is my uh, 10 newton the other one we have uh, this angle which is 60 degrees the one which is uh, having 20 newtons and the last one which is having uh, an angle of 30 degrees from from positive x axis and this one is 15 newtons so this one is raised at a given angle of 30 degrees okay so i can draw these vectors separately draw them like this of the first one which is having uh, 45 degrees and the one which is raised at, a foot at, at, a, at a, an angle of 45 degrees is 5 newton i'll have the other vector here which is being raised at a, gi uh, a given angle of 20 degrees and this is him uh, uh, this is 10 newton you can also write the other one somewhere there which is raised at a given angle of uh, 30 degrees and this is it. the one which is raised at a, an angle of 30 degrees is 15 newtons and the other one here which is raised at a given angle of at a given angle of uh, 60 degrees like this which is what the one which is raised at a given angle of 60 degrees is 20 newtons remember i said we have so many ways of calculating vectors our main aim is to find the magnitude and the direction of um, the vector in short we have to find the resultant of um, these same vectors okay we can proceed remember all the angles must be read from positive x 
axis going and clockwise until you reach or you touch a given point. All right, I think you can proceed. So like I said, we are using the analytical method to solve the resultant of every vector. Okay, all right, so like I said, I said the component, remember we have the X component and the Y component. So the, the one which is going to be cut by the angle, this is my vector and it has a resultant like this. So if this one is the one which is cut by the angle theta, automatically the component here, the x component you are going to do it, must have carried a cos theta. So if I want to resolve this into its component, I'm resolving this into its component, then I have to say x has to be equal to r cos theta. Why do I include cos theta like this? Because this is the only angle which has been cut, sorry, this is the component which has been cut by the angle. Then in continuation, you want to get the y, the y component again. You say y has to be equal to r sine theta. So in short, the x component always supports c. In short, the angle where it cuts, the component which is cut by the angle must carry cos. Must carry cos. The one which is not cut by the angle has to carry what? Sine. That's how these things are going to be resolved. So every vector, suppose here we had... 5 newtons, meaning that where there is 5 arrow here, I have to put what? 5. Theta, the angle that is raised by what? The same force, which is given in the what? In the question, if I am to turn, if I am to turn it like this. We have 5 newtons, which is raised at a given angle of what? Uh, 45 degrees. So every vector here has to be resolved like that. The one or the component, in this case, we have the x component here as well as the y component there so since this one is where we are starting from to read our angles automatically all the x component must carry um cause for every vector okay so whenever we are to display these vectors on this table which is uh, the analytical table this is what we call analytical method whereby you are displaying all the vectors on the table so that you you find the components. So here we are going to find the resultant, the resultant in X for all these vectors. Once you punch everything, you sum up everything, and you plug in the, what, the final answer here. Same applies even on this given part. You say R, Y, which is going to be equal to what? Remember we are dealing with the X component. Here we are dealing with the, the Y component. Okay, so you have to say, this must give you a vector sum for x and y components on their given what line. So you have to add the vector sum like you say 5 cos 45 plus 10 cos 20 plus 15 cos 30 until you finish and you add those and you'll be able to get that at 5.92 newtons. Remember we are, we are resolving the force so you have to put the units for every component same applies to the other one you do likewise and you'll be able to get that 1.78 newtons once you do that now for you to find the magnitude you find as follows i think you still remember the formula that i'm going to give you in the following page so this this is the formula i was talking about this one to find the magnitude you say error has to be equal to what? That. Error has to be equal to that. So error has to be equal to, you put the x component based on that part. Same applies to this other part. Then whenever you continue, you understand that error is going to be equal to, going to be equal to, you say root of, and you get your calculator and punch 35.92 square say plus 31.78 square then you say equal to so you have to put it under the square root like the way the question is saying so i'll write 
two three zero zero point two one four eight so when I say square root of the answer I'm getting forty seven point nine six of which this is just approximately forty eight meaning that the resultant of all these vectors must give us what must give us fourteen eighty newtons so to find the direction you can just use that formula and you'll be able to reach on the final answers for 21.5 degrees so that's how to resolve vectors into their components and how to find the magnitude follow like the video do not forget to turn on the, the notification bell i'll drop my line so that you have if you have any questions you can you can even post them to me i'll be able to answer as possible and in a quick way.